I'm Matt Vanacoro, and today we're going to take a look at some cool things you can do with some of the Samsung Graphite MIDI controllers with iOS as well as with some external other MIDI devices like a keyboard or a tone module. Let's take a look first at the M32. I've got the M32 plugged into an iOS device right now. I'm using my iPad. The M32 will plug directly in using the Apple Camera Connection Kit. It's a simple little cable that just gives you a USB port on the bottom of your iPad, and that will allow you to plug in the M32 and it will just work. It will be recognized as a MIDI device. Let's take a look at Animoog, a great Moog synth emulator for the iPad. The first thing I'll do when I plug it in and get Animoog running is just open up the setup and make sure that the Samsung Graphite M32 is selected as the MIDI input device. Once I've done that, I can play a few notes. And be very confident that it's going to work. And there's no latency. It just goes right, in, right away. It works right away. And you could use this to perform quite easily. It's pretty amazing that you can get a Moog synth this cheaply these days using just this piece of software for the iPad and your M32. Now, I've got a volume knob and a data encoder on the M32, and I'd hate to see them go to waste. They don't have to be specifically for volume or data. I can move that to anything I want. First, I'll open up a preset. Let's open up a lead. Let's get a nice oscillator synced lead. So it's pretty serious. I can now tell Animoog that I want this volume knob to control the frequency sweep, for example. So I go to Setup, and I choose Map CCs. You'll see them highlighted all of a sudden. I pick Frequency, and now I turn this volume encoder. And as I do, you'll see that Animoog picks it up and recognizes that that should now control frequency. I can do the same with the data encoder. I can move it and slide it so that it controls resonance. I'm done mapping. I'll play a little. And you can hear that frequency sweep. And I can change the data encoder. So I got some pretty cool results using just these two knobs, and I can make them control anything. The crush, the drive, the tuning, um, just about anything you can think of. I've got these cool pitch bend and modulation touch strips that are in place of the actual wheels. So since the M32 is a highly portable controller, there's a lot less worry that these will get crushed or broken or stuck inside a, in my backpack or something. So now I can just use them. And if modulation isn't mapped to something, I can map it and have it control something there. So there's a lot of control options with this M32.